Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Startup Garage Podcast, your, star, your source for all things startup. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Martha Montoya on the line, and she's CEO and founder over at Ag Tools Inc. Martha, welcome to the show. Good. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where zone we will be at. All right, I love it. And uh, so, Martha, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about innovations in food and ag supply chain, um, which you're an expert in. Um, but before we do that, let's go a little bit further into your, into your company. So tell us a little bit more about Ag Tools, please. So Actools is um, it's a SaaS platform. It's a, we're calling like the Bloomberg of the industry. It's a real-time data of what's going on in the industry of what we call specialty crops, fruits and vegetables, nuts, herbs, and flowers. That's awesome. And um, I think that's a great transition. Well, first off, actually, before we get into the topic, I just want to congratulate you. I know that you just, uh, you just closed a round of funding, so that's not an easy task. So congrats on that. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a, it was a, it was an interesting round. Meaning, uh, it was the first time I fundraised uh, for a startup. So I have fundraised for large projects, but not for a startup. And a lot of amazing investors, both in uh, San Diego and Orange County, uh, who believed in us and in Washington State. So it's a West Coast, it's a heavy West Coast. <laughs> Man, that's amazing. So, again, yeah, congrats there, and uh, let, let's dive into today's topic. So, innovations in food and ag supply chain. I mean, where do you want to start with this topic? It's a, bit, it's a big topic that affects us all. Yes, I think that um, where we start is where we are now. Uh, the supply chain broke down, and though toilet paper was the start of the of the season here, it really proved that uh, everything that we have comes from nature, even toilet paper. And therefore, uh, we need we needed to understand, or maybe not, but we had uh, this information for some time. And now, even a simple consumer understands that everything comes from somewhere, and that those supply chains are very weak. And that's what I have been doing for the last 25 years, creating um, rings of security around the potential wars and strikes and earthquakes that I have lived. Never left that. Never lived a pandemic, but now we have one. But it really proved that our food and our anything that we consume is really on a weak link, and we need to strengthen those through a lot of technology from here on. Where do you see, so I, I know this is a problem that you're working on, or an opportunity, I should say, that you're working on day in and day out over at Ag Tools. Um, so where do you see some of the um, low-hanging fruit kind of on this issue? And pun, pun intended, pun maybe not intended, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, do you, where, where do you see that some of those opportunities? <laughs> <laughs> Not by the season, by the way. So what do you see some of the, the opportunities like that, that people and people in the industry should be thinking about right now? I think the, the, the issue today is that we, we need more food because we need more to feed more people, yet we're wasting over 30% of the food between the farm and the distribution centers. And, Wow. And that has to do with the supply chain. So imagine we're losing you said 30%. Percent. That's 3 0. Let's not just like skip over no, 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 that. No. So, like, no, no, break no. that down. So, what does that mean? And I, we and lose I want, over to, I want to break it down because it's interesting. It's 4,900 truckloads per day, per day wow. in the United States, and 62,300 per day in the world that we're just literally throwing away. And when I say throwing away, it's they don't harvest because there's no labor. They don't harvest because the market is not good. You put them on the truck, and all of a sudden there's a storm in the middle, then you have to drop it. Or you see what I mean? There's a current exchange of uh, um, a exchange, and now Argentina has a lower um, 
currency, and so they're dumping blueberries in the market, and the Michigan blueberry farmers are not seeing what's going on, and they get they decide to not harvest. So you see the dynamic of the market is creating this non-sustainable um, process of the supply chain that are uh, impacting us all by not having the food, but at the same time having the food but throwing it away. Wow. And so how is, um, how is Ag Tools um, working to kind of to, to do their part in, in fixing what's broken in the supply chain? Because I think it's really interesting where you're putting your talents. Well, I think that the first thing we all have to think is that the most important element in a farm is a farmer. Without the mm -hmm. farmer, I don't care how much technology you put in, you still need at least one individual in that farm to manage a farm, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, even one, as much as the whole ag tech industry is going about better watering irrigation, better soil development, better... Somebody's got to turn on the hose. Down. I don't care what you say. Yeah, well, <laughs> well that's a, like, maybe that's better. <laughs> and so what happens is that we are, we're increasing this. Um, we're going to the farmer to tell them what to do better, which they are, and mm -hmm. we're increasing yield. So we have increased yield the last three years uh, to 10 years. In fact, California is producing the same amount of food with one, I think it's one third, no, two thirds of the land that we had before. So we have increased wow. yield. Um, but what has not done is increased profitability on the farmer mm. and guess what drives if you're a business person after three five ten years not making money or even making less money eventually you say you know what I don't think I'd like to do this anymore so the baby boomers were losing those baby boomer farmers and the mm. millenniums look at this business model and say hmm I don't know if I want to get into this business right and mm -hmm. so the actus was originally created to save the farmers and the reason for that is that Anything that goes from the farm out, the trucking company, the cooler, the packaging house, everybody makes money. But until it reaches a distribution center, because this is a consignment industry, they might lose all of it. So if it doesn't reach that distribution center, everybody gets paid on the supply chain, except for the farmer. The farmer takes the losses. So it's not a business model. Imagine all of you in listening to us, that you're shipping something with a potential price, but if it doesn't reach there, then you swallow the whole losses, everything. Wow. And that's not a business model. And yeah, very few people a, know that. That's a, Yeah, that's a tough model. I'm like, uh, I'm thinking to myself as you're, as you're saying it, I'm like, yeah, that's a tough mm -hmm. model. But, but, but um, with, the, with the right improvements, it can, it can you know, they should be that. One, it, yeah, exactly. Then it becomes more interesting. Well, and think about it, and, and I want to make sure that we all understand this, that very few of us will buy a tomato without looking at the tomato, right? We're starting to be mm -hmm. a little bit better about receiving food in our door because of the C-19 and because of the millenniums. But still, you go and buy, you like to see the orange, the tomato. The same thing happens with those trucks. Those trucks have to arrive, and they have to be inspected in order to be received. And so that causes a lot of the losses, too. And so what we need is to make sure that the farmer and everybody in the supply chain has the real-time data, as we have in Actus, but it's government and official data, not individual data, so the market cannot be maneuvered differently, right? Mm -hmm. But it is all official data, so now you're able to see transparently. Like I, I tell the, in our industry, I say it's like the Uber. Now you see how much is going to be from here to there. You just need to rearrange things. You need to change your crops. Um, you need to make sure that you irrigate differently. Make sure because the market is going to be not as great in June, the first week of June, because now you can see 25 years of historical data in seconds, milliseconds, because we sit on a platform that is a billion transactions per second. So you're able to see in seconds, 25 years of historical data to be able to manage and maneuver better. And also on the other side, from the buyer side of it, whether it's a processing plant or whether it's a supermarket or whether it's whomever, they can see faster the data to decide, I want to do a whole mango program this year, certain times of the year, or a, or a strawberry program certain times of the year, and so on and so forth. 
Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Um, and I love that you're out there working, um, fighting the fight for our farmers, because like you said, mm-hmm. um, we, we, we obviously need them. We need the food. So I love it. I love what you're doing. And like I said, the supply <laughs> chain, we don't think of it until something is broken or we can't get something we want to realize how fragile it all is. I'm like, mm-hmm. when you said that, I'm like, myself included, I'm like, man, I didn't know it until you go to a shelf and nothing's there. You're like, what happened? This is normally <laughs> no, just no. magically here. <laughs> like, this is what's going on? Who didn't do their job? who didn't stock the shelf and it's like no it's not stocking the shelf it's it doesn't it, it's not available as a product and we're so spoiled in this country in my opinion yes. um, um that especially where i'm at in in california i'm so we're so spoiled that um we don't realize what it takes to get that that to the that to the shelf we don't know and if we you were, and if remember when you were growing up we were when we were all growing up we had certain fruits and vegetables of the year certain times of the year we didn't oh, yeah. demand to have strawberries the whole year round, right? Well, guess what we have done? We, we all consumers have pushed us to want to do strawberries year round in different parts of the world. So now they're all interested, related to each other. Now, we, we, you, when you walk into the store and you expect all of them there, uh, the two things that are happening. One, the whole supply chain now is very multifaceted. Many countries delivering. Right now, citrus, we have them from... Morocco, from South Africa, from Chile, from uh, Peru, from Mexico, and from Australia coming into this country. All of them, so you really can consume oranges today. While in the past, we had oranges only certain time of the year, and that was it. End of the story. We went to the next fruit or the next vegetable. So that's number one problem. And number two problem is that we're creating a lot of pressure in regions that should not be producing those crops, but they have but they feel, hey, we'll produce them and send them to the northern hemisphere of the world, which they will pay for it, because they want all year-round strawberries or year-round asparagus. And so we're putting a lot of um, uh, natural resources pressure on Earth in general, and that's not good either for the future. Mm. Well well said, and, and yeah, you took me down memory lane. I forgot about that already. You're right. We didn't you used to always have... Um, it's like it's like Amazon on demand uh, fruit or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, always, <laughs> it's like it's like what the the Amazon nation of uh, fruit. I'm in. <laughs> oh man. But imagine um, so, imagine you walking into a retail store and not seeing strawberries or berries of any kind. It's the oh, red, man. which is color red. That's mm-hmm. the number one item that brings in. Uh, and remember, when you walk into the retail store, all those greens and all those colors move your brain and your body to consume more and to buy more. That's why those Mm -hmm. sections are in the front of the door. And if you walk in and there's no red, strawberries, berries, raspberries, blueberries, and think about it, any one of your listeners, when you walk in, the first things that you always see, those red items. (laughs) Because there's a reason Ah. for it. (laughs) Oh, man, they're getting me at the... I knew it, they were getting me. Uh. (laughs) So, So, Martha... That being said, um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about ag tools or to connect with you and your team, what's the best way for them to, to keep up with your work? Sure, definitely come uh, call me. Or, I mean, email me on, on Martha at ag that tools or visit our webpage ag that tools. Um, and uh, please, uh, we're welcoming on with concepts, uh, ideas. A lot of great ideas are coming sometimes from outside of the industry because that's really what happens. That they, this is the last of the digitalization industry in the world. We are the last one. So this is amazing. We have the the, the ability to see every mistake every other industry made and impl- implement it on ours. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Um, well, Martha, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your uh, your background, all the great things you're doing over at Ag Tools to really help solve this uh, food and um, and ag supply chain uh, problems. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of thank value you. out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Startup Garage, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Martha, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much, and thank you. I appreciate the farmers every single day.